I'm Joanne from the Full Spectrum Centre Limited, an award-winning wellness and vocational training centre, and you're listening to the Full Spectrum Wellness Podcast. This show is all about physical, mental, emotional and spiritual wellness, and it's for people who are looking to improve their overall health and well-being. Each week, I'll share with you all the positive takeaways, tools, techniques and tips that I've gathered in both my personal and professional wellness journey that will help you to look, feel and be well. With a dose of motivation and meditation to keep you going, I'll be joined by a few friends who will be sharing their insights along the way too. Welcome to episode 32 of our Full Spectrum Wellness Podcast. I'm so happy and excited to be back here with you for our 32nd episode. Today, I welcome a very special guest, my friend and fellow therapist, Sarah Morolia, aka The Skin Witch. Sarah is a dedicated face yoga teacher, advanced facial massage expert and knowledgeable skin professional. With a profound passion for the face and its inherent beauty, Sarah wholeheartedly believes in the transformative power of natural treatments. Sarah's expertise lies in guiding individuals on a journey towards rejuvenation and radiance through the practice of face yoga and advanced facial massage techniques. And I've benefited from both Sarah's face yoga classes and her amazing facial massages. So I can absolutely recommend her if you live locally to Tameside. With her deep understanding of the body's natural healing abilities and the intricate mechanics of the face, Sarah empowers her clients to unlock their true potential for youthful and glowing skin. Sarah's unwavering commitment to her craft and to her clients makes her a trusted and sought after practitioner in the field of facial wellness. Through her teachings and natural treatments, Sarah aims to inspire and enlighten others about the profound benefits that can be achieved by working with the body's inherent wisdom to heal itself. And in this podcast episode, Sarah will be speaking a little more about her work, but also about her own wellness journey. I hope you enjoy. Hello, Sarah. Welcome to our Full Spectrum Wellness Podcast. Hi, Joanne. Thanks for having me on. Oh, I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you so much for for joining us and uh, for sharing your experiences and your story. Um, I wanted to start by asking you what the word wellness means to you. Well, I suppose it means different things to me now than it used to do, you know, because mm. when I first got into my like holistic journey and stuff um that's the what I think about wellness is kind of um evolved you know like and even though as holistic therapists we tend to like think about wellness like even though we know it's for us as well <laughs> we tend to think of it as something for other people so yeah. like now further down the line I am like looking after my own wellness more even though you kind of think you are already but then then you don't <laughs> you're just looking after everybody else so so just recently um I'm just making sure you know I take care of myself a bit better as well and um you know make sure I take time off um you know for my own self-care as well so and, yeah I think that's really important when you're you know you're looking after other people and doing like holistic services you know to practice what you preach as well <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even though so- we do try because we give us that way. <laughs> it's so easy. It's a slippery slope, it isn't it? We we kind of try and prioritise our own self-care and wellness, but we kind of want to be there for everyone else. And it's it just slowly ticks away if you're not very careful that you end yeah. up being bottom of the of the priority list. So I'm glad that yeah. you're taking that initiative and really being careful yeah. to make time it's, for yourself. It's took a while, um, you know, like hmm. it's... So I'm just trying, I'm just like doing my set days and it's really hard to say no when people say, oh, can you just fit me in? Because you want to do them. And, and when you love what you're doing as well, but yeah, like you said, if you're not careful, you end up doing too much. So I'm really kind of, you know, making a note of it to really stick to what I say. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and, yeah, and take time for myself because, uh, yeah, and doing things like, not just necessarily, not like going for a massage or a spa day and things like that, things mm. like just taking Uh, like cooking healthy meals for when I am working you know like just like preparation pretty boring stuff really it's not nothing exciting but just general (laughs) it's like simple things you know 
um just simple but that those yeah. simple things are so important and and underrated i think we doesn't have to, life doesn't have to be exciting every minute of the day we, it's important yeah. that we do those simple things yeah just to keep things running as smooth as, the, as, the, as they can smoothly yeah. and just like yeah being peaceful and just yeah getting ready for for things <laughs> That's, that's uh, what it means to me anyway. I love that. Thank you. Um, when did you first become interested in holistic therapies and, and particularly your specialist facial treatments that you do? Well, I started um, probably in 2010. That's when I first uh, got interested in holistic therapies because the first thing I did, which probably a lot of people do, is uh, I did a crystal course. That's probably where I met you in Crystal Carols. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and then Reiki, and uh, and then I thought, what can else can I use this bed for? Because <laughs> I bought like <laughs> a, a therapy bed, and that was it. Then I never stopped since. I went to like mm. Oldham College and did like a holistic therapies um, diploma, like for a year, and I was like forty. I think I was forty three then. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, and then I started getting interested in skin. Probably, probably about last four four or five years yeah and it's just kind of evolved really from from then and it's like mainly mainly skin now and face yeah. yoga um everything to do with the face all different like massage based facials because um that's what even though i was like a body worker for a long time uh so that's kind of, it's kind of evolved into all about the skin but like natural reju- facial rejuvenation yeah and uh techniques you know and i teach people how to take care of their own like face <laughs> you know like teaching a face yoga and facial massage to do on myself um yeah but yeah people think it's like just a bunch of exercises to do on your face but it's about how it makes you feel again it's not just about oh yeah i want to look younger even though people come to it sometimes for the aesthetic benefits but then they start yeah. realizing how it makes you feel inside because really that is more important and if you feel good inside yeah end up looking better too <laughs> so absolutely i can highly recommend your face yoga classes uh, they are amazing oh, um, and yeah. so good for the, i don't think people realize how much tension they hold in their face in their jaw it just then travels down to the neck and that yeah. can lead to shoulder problems everything is connected everything is um yeah because we hold a lot of um we can hold like um stuck emotions in the face because like the other muscles in the body they're just like functional but for your face they're like we have like mimic muscles and it's our means of communication um you know it's like the only animal uh is that can like communicate through facial expressions is like the human being uh so we can hold like stuck emotions and negative you know like and and they can become like, well, we hold our issues in our tissues. And people think, like you say, about the neck and the shoulders and stuff, but it's it's all connected. The jaw can get really tight and you can get pain, yeah. people grind their teeth and, and like lead to neck problems, like you said. So it's, it's, it is a wellness thing as well. It's not just about, yeah, it makes you look younger. Absolutely. <laughs> it's and that stretching, releasing, breathing, the posture. Yeah. So it's all good stuff. It is. And, and so I have to let people know that you are actually my massage therapist yeah. uh, and I have your facial treatments because it helps with TMJ for me. I hold a lot of tension in my jaw. I grind my teeth and, and grit my teeth at night in particular and when I'm stressed. So that, that specialist service that you do that's very bespoke. Uh, I know you tailor it to exactly what we need as a client. Um, and then the fact that you do intra or so you do inside, you massage from the inside, that's what really helps me to release yeah. that tension. And not a lot of people offer that service. Yeah, I do get a lot of people just recently and they, they come from all over like Manchester, you know, like because um, they, they look this kind of looking that up on the uh, Internet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, it's surprising people coming because they've got jaw pain um so yeah it is really helpful and as and as well I teach them how to do it when people come for that because even though it's okay coming for like a treatment but it's kind of you know I'd, I'd like to show them how to do it on the self you know so they can release the muscles on a daily basis you yeah. know empowering them not just you know so they've got self-care tools so they can do it themselves as well so before they have the treatment <laughs> we stood in front of the mirror mirror and I said <laughs> bet, bet to be doing your own <laughs> yeah but but yeah I do get them on the couch and give them a nice treatment but but it's helpful because you know it's like giving them tools what they can use the self 
So yeah, absolutely. And it, like I say, it's so surprising how that can help release that tension. Yeah. The first time you yeah. did it, I was like, I was a bit apprehensive because I don't really like going to the dentist. So the fact that people, <laughs> you were going to put your fingers inside my mouth kind of triggered me a little bit for <laughs> dentist visits. But I have to say that that first time you did it, I could not believe the difference in my yeah. jaw. And you could actually see because you take before and after photographs. Yeah, and it does. It, even, it, even though it feels better, obviously, but it's like when we've got tension in the jaw, it can our face can take on a quite a square appearance you know yeah. like because it's muscly um and then and if, if we've got like tension in the the jaw we can get like a puffy face as well because the lymphatic fluid is like restricted and doesn't flow yeah. as freely as it might do so so yeah it can kind of give you a little lift like a natural face lift just by releasing tight muscles you know with even without doing any exercises to tone your face up yeah. just by releasing that tension it can kind of spring things back up again that's what I was blown away by the first time that you took the before and after pictures the difference between releasing that tension and then the before picture was just amazing so yeah I'm, I'm, I highly recommend that if you are holding attention in that you draw you you make an appointment to see Sarah because uh, it is it is I can't, I can't say any more than it is amazing you are also known as the skin witch aren't you oh yeah the skin witch <laughs> so <laughs> I, I want to yeah I want to know about that journey to becoming that skin expert and actually setting up that side of your business yeah so so what because because when I started getting into facials and skin and uh, particular like massage based facials you know because my treatments even though I use like clinical grade products as well uh, for me healthy skin relies on movement beneath the surface it yeah. doesn't the answer is not in a pot of cream even though it is important what we're putting on our skin um you know we don't want to put in any nasty paraben parabens or preservatives things like that but it's yeah. not the whole story so so with the the massage based facials but even that so because clients have come I felt like there was something missing it wasn't enough so when clients have come they say how long is it going to last the results I started practicing face yoga myself and um and then I decided to become a teacher because I thought that's the missing link because it's like even though even if someone came monthly for a facial you know like and you get really good because I do get really good results like with the face sculpting you know like um but I thought, what if they was doing something every, well, they don't have to do it every day, but, you know, like doing some, a little bit of facial massage or exercises. And, and that's, and that's like kind of uh, my client's homework. Cause when they said to me, how long is it going to last the, the results? And I said, well, <laughs> that kind of depends on how much effort you want to put in yourself as well. <laughs> they don't always want to hear yeah, that, like. but for true, <laughs> for true long-term lasting results, it's like if you was doing a little bit yourself, a few exercises, you can even do them in the car, you know, like you don't have to do spend like ages doing it every day. But I thought it's a cumulative effect of uh, these little bits of like massage, exercise, lymphatic drainage that kind of, you know, like um, makes all the difference. So even if somebody comes for a facial once a month, they are going to get benefit. And it was, I mean, let's face it, you can't beat somebody else giving you a facial, but you're still yeah. getting the benefit doing things yourself, like on a regular basis. That's where the real magic lies, you know, in your self-care as well. Not just like sticking creams on, but, you yeah. know, like getting everything moving under the surface. So, so that's, so it kind of evolved from like learning about skin and facial massage to then kind of, I kind of try and empower people so they can do things for themselves as well, even though it's great that they can come for treatments and take that time out and have someone else do the work. But, you know, like um, it's, I've got some pictures from people who've been doing face yoga with me and I'm not kidding. It's like the face is more open, the tension yeah. just melted away. So I felt like that was like, the final kind of bit of the jigsaw yeah. <laughs> you know like, it's like a 360 degree approach you know like um and again it's boils down to self-care you know because we, we exercise our bodies and stuff and it's only the same the face got muscles and and um you know we get tension in it like you were saying so releasing tension is important and and even toning the muscles like like we do with our body you know yeah a lot of facial muscles so and we forget so, we, we just you know people will go to the gym and they'll be busy working out the, the shoulders yeah. and the legs but we forget about the face 
Yeah, and it's like it's it's and the muscles in the face um, they are different from the body because uh, they're a lot smaller and thinner and flatter. So they do, they, you know, once you start doing it, um, exercising your face and massaging, you do see a different quite quickly a difference because um, it takes it doesn't take as long to get them into shape, <laughs> which is a good thing because everybody yeah. these days they want a quick fix, but there is no quick fix with natural methods mm-hmm. you know like it does take commitment um but yeah, yeah it doesn't have to be lengthy <laughs> yeah and it's not just about how it looks it's about how you feel then I know for me having my facial treatments view helps with my migraines I don't get as many if I'm keeping up with those exercises for the facial muscles because yeah. a lot of that tension we hold in the face can lead to headaches and migraines definitely um and you know, like yeah, it just leads to like stagnation. You know, when when the muscles are tight, um, you know, because the blood. So even though the blood circulation is still working, um, otherwise <laughs> we won't be alive. Yeah. But and not working at an optimal level, like because because the um, the blood's bringing fresh oxygen and nutrients to your skin, and then the waste is coming down. So it's like an elevator. So your neck is like the gateway to your face so all the the good stuff's coming up and all the waste it's like the yeah. fat it's like your waste disposal <laughs> taking everything <laughs> and that tension restricting you know on the movement so yeah it's it's um keeps everything flowing <laughs> absolutely I'm really interested to to hear and to share with our listeners about your own wellness journey and some of the challenges that you've faced with your own health and wellness well, people um, are quite surprised when um, when I tell them this. But twenty years ago, because um, I, I wasn't because um, it's only two thousand and ten, which is thirteen years ago. I started yeah. my holistic journey, but like twenty years ago, so before that, um, I was kind of the opposite. It's like I was um, battling addiction. Uh, okay. I used to be addicted to alcohol, and uh, I don't make no secret of it because I even put yeah. it on my web because. Because when people see, you know, how far I've come, it kind of, I hope, uh, you know, I, I don't mind sharing about that because I feel like it might help somebody else, you know, um, who's struggling with, yeah. with anything like that. You know, and it, and it has got kind of a stigma because, you know, people feel sorry for um, people if they've got like things like, you know, like illnesses like cancer or things like that. But with addiction, there's a lot of stigma around it, you know, the, you know, like um, some people might think, oh, well, it's their own fault. Just don't do it. But it is actually yeah. Ill- an illness. So, so yeah, um, yeah, I was I was kind of really bad, not just like a drink problem. I was like to the point of where almost <laughs> not alive anymore. I was that bad. But, wow. um, but yeah, I managed to kind of pull myself out from that. And, um, and I think really that's what started me on, you know, a more spiritual and holistic journey. It didn't happen right away, but because yeah. um, I wasn't interested in anything like like that before. Um, but I think it's kind of, you know, like a bit of an awakening <laughs> when you've been yeah. close. Um, but people can't believe it now. This, you know, like um, they say, "Oh, you look so healthy," and um, you know, you won't believe it. But yeah, I, used, you know, I'd be shaking in the morning, drinking vodka first thing in the morning to stop myself from shaking Mm -hmm. really that bad um I was a mess really so um um, what kind of health issues did that lead to uh well for me it's like because some people who've got drink problems um you know like it doesn't really affect them psychologically um and they kind of they hold the life together like functioning alcoholics yeah you know a job um but then it might affect the health. Whereas I was lucky health wise, it didn't, you know, I, I recovered quite quickly, even though it was quite bad. But yeah. it did me um, more kind of psychologically, you know, emotionally, mentally, um, you know, where like my whole life fell apart, you know, like I lost everything. Yeah. Um, so even though, you know, I bounced back physically quite quickly, um, but for me, it affected me more in that way, you know. Uh, so I did literally <laughs> lose everything. Um, so I had to just start from scratch. So, yeah, I was really 
uh, really thin and hardly eating anything at the time. Um, so yeah, I wasn't particularly healthy physically, but you know there was no long term damage, so I was quite lucky in that respect. Yeah. So so I don't drink at all now, and it's not that I'm against drinking; it's just not for me because yeah, you know when you've been to that point where you are that bad, bad um, um, I just yeah, I just leave it alone now. I don't touch it, <laughs> but I don't. I'm not bothered anyway now. I'm, it's like I don't miss it or anything like yeah. that. Um, but yeah. Um, so that that was my main kind of thing what I've had in life. Yeah. Uh, so do you feel yeah. like you've got a second chance, like a kind yeah. of a do over? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, so twenty years ago, yeah, I wouldn't have thought, you know, because I ended up in rehab for a whole year. Wow. Um, I lost my house, my children, uh, my driving license, you know, everything really. Um and almost my life <laughs> but yeah so but yeah so I've kind of turned things around now <laughs> but you're be- such an inspiration such yeah. an inspiration I kind of sometimes I don't think um you know I don't really think about it but hmm. when uh people ask me I think wow well, I suppose they have done really well you know yeah and, and it's good to you know like um people I'm quite open about it you know um, I don't mind people asking me, you know, and if I can yeah. help in any way, I, I will, you know. Oh, thank you for being so open and honest and sharing that. I'm sure there'll be lots of people listening that can relate to that uh, to that challenge and, and hopefully you'll inspire them to kind of make those changes for themselves and, and yeah. get healthy in yeah. mind, body and spirit. Yeah. Now that you've got this second chance at life, what are you most passionate about? I know you're passionate about skin, <laughs> about massage <laughs> therapies. Is there anything else? And you've got a crystal shop, so you're obviously passionate about yeah. crystals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Um, yeah, I am passionate about my work, but then then you've got to be careful because it's not just all about work. But you don't feel yeah. like when you're passionate about your work, you don't feel like it is work, do you? <laughs> no, that's like- the danger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they say, oh, you know, you, if you enjoy your job, you'll never work a day in your life, and it's true. Mm-hmm. But it, but yeah, I am. I like being outside. Um, you know, like I sit in the the woods drumming yeah. with my witchy friends. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for anyone who's listening, um, yeah, it's just a nature based thing. Um, what I do. Um, so there's a group of us who have been together about well about the same time since I started with holistic therapies 2000 yeah. quite a while um and we go out and sit in the woods we follow the season of seasons of the year you know like and have a fire my friend's got her own woods <laughs> so wow. yeah we do <laughs> that's <like>. handy <laughs> yeah so it's it's all like nature based spirituality really it's not about putting spells on people and things like that yeah. what some people might watch think uh, see films on telly and think <laughs> it's, it's not Hollywood <laughs> yeah no it's not not anything like that <laughs> I'm passionate about my dog as well yes yeah. you've got a gorgeous is he a bulldog yeah an English bulldog yeah he's gorgeous yeah. But <laughs> lovely and sweet. He's, and he's very big I remember when you first got him and he was a tiny puppy and now he's yeah. huge <laughs> yeah. he's like a big teddy bear um, we sometimes bring him to the shop but a lot of the time we leave him at home now because he's um he's just comfy and you know yeah. sleep likes to sleep all day <laughs> <laughs> he's got the right idea <laughs> I know. yeah yeah he's a, he's a good a good dog <laughs> so we've so. talked about how how easy it is to to overwork when you love what you do and you do what you love how do you manage that work-life balance well, um, I've limited my days um, in what I'm doing my treatment. So you know, I only do three days, even though yeah. sometimes, you know, like I've kind of, you know, but um, like, oh, I'll just put some <laughs> on this day or that. But I'm really trying to be strict now um, yeah. for myself, really, just so I can look after myself more um, because I do work online because I'm online every single day, really, doing my classes. Yeah. So that work even though again you don't see it as work because um I hope my classes are only like 20 minutes long so I keep them that short so they're long enough to be effective um and 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 um short enough so people can fit them into their life yeah so, uh, so I'm still doing that but 
you know, when I'm not at work doing treatments, I'm planning my classes out for the next week and, you know, things like that. There's all sorts of things, as you know, what you need to do in a business and then yeah. cooking and things like that. So it all needs to be done. So I thought, no, I need to, you know, stick to what I say now and, and, um, and do that and just work on set days actually doing treatments even though there's always stuff to do yeah. and um yeah I'm kind of so it's really about being disciplined it isn't it with yourself once you make that decision it's it is it. yeah yeah uh, it's about yeah because it's like it's like therapists and healers um we've got to, you know like your boundaries you've got to even though you think you know we're all about giving and stuff but it's really important to maintain your own boundaries and that yeah. don't mean like being horrible just means looking after you it's just another form but it's easy especially for people like us to overgive. and I've yeah. been uh, guilty of that <laughs> you know give too much we all have too much uh, of everything really yeah how do you distress 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 well I, I, I like being out in nature so yeah. you know like um and I do that going you know out with um sitting in the woods and stuff with the fire drumming do we do we yeah. sit around drumming as well <laughs> drumming is so <laughs> good for your health like... and well-being yeah uh, so i've got my own drum what i made in glastonbury <laughs> drum wow. working drum birth and so so yeah that's um it's like for, i find it hard to meditate but when i'm doing that yeah. um you kind of just drop into that that state don't you so yeah and it's kind of doing something because I th- I find it hard to just sit there and think of nothing. <laughs> I need to be doing yeah. something, you know. Like, but even um, you know, like I try and be mindful, even doing like mundane tasks like washing up, just like yeah. kind of paying attention to like the bubbles and stuff. You know, like not not kind of thinking about anything else, just trying yeah. to be absorbed in what I'm doing. So. So even if I'm not doing anything like you know going for a massage or a facial or just like trying to be present really yeah and in whatever I'm doing and mindful and slow down you know and um but yeah and I like I like to have a nice hot bath with Epsom salts that de-stresses Ooh. me <laughs> that's a good one what does your yeah. daily self-care routine look like well it, it always includes um face yoga or facial massage yeah um you know, like, because that's what I'm doing in my classes. So it kind of forces me to, to do it because <laughs> I'm doing it <laughs> in the club. But, um, yeah, I have to show up because, oh, that reminds me, um, my face yoga club's going to be one year old on the 18th of this month. Oh, happy anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so one year uh, kept wow. it going and get up at quarter to six because I show up at seven in the morning. Not every day, but five mornings. Uh, and then I do the evening classes on the other days but but yeah I need to get up early so then I can kind of so I'm not just rolling out of bed <laughs> going on the screen <laughs> so that always features in my self-care but you know again I kind of have a tendency to get obsessed like with one thing and I really do need to kind of address the rest of my body and I keep saying it and not doing it like we do I need yes. to like kind of some body yoga or doing something else because I am aware because I'm just doing that and then you know so I'm trying to like get the balance where I'm doing something for the rest of me as well so that's the thing with me I'm just honest you know like I don't pretend if I'm not doing something I don't I don't say oh yeah I'm doing this and that it's I'm realistic and yeah and that needs to change as well I need to address things but yeah at least I'm doing my face (laughs) (laughs) so I'm but yeah, it's really hard to fit everything in, isn't it? What we want to do. Yeah, there's just not and enough I'm, hours in the day, is there? <laughs> and I'm hoping that now I've just kind of like been more strict with the how many days I work that I can, yeah. you know, do more self care because it's really important. And I'm realizing that more, more so as a, as I get older, you know, self care. And I know we we like to say it, but we really need to do it don't we as well <laughs> yeah we need to practice what we preach <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> what would you what would you say are the most important lessons that you've learned in your life um the, yeah I would say like you know like be it feeling like we're enough like where we are right now because it it feels like sometimes we're always striving for the next thing the next thing and it's like you never arrive 
-hmm. and it's like and I can I can be like that myself now but it's it's not just about the destination is it it's about the journey and kind of making the most of what you're doing right now not oh there's this task and then then I'll be that you know like if people like want to lose weight or when I when I lose weight or when I get a new husband or boyfriend or whatever I'll be happy but it's about kind of being happy right now with whatever Mm -hmm. you've got you know it might not be perfect but it's all we've got isn't it and and like not comparing yourself with other people because sometimes you know like social media instagram facebook you, you see you know like experts in this and that and you think oh you know if i just do this more one more course and i'm guilty mm-hmm. of that get addicted to courses but we're you know we're enough anyway whatever it is we were we were meant to be right now and it's got to be enough because that's all there is isn't it and yeah. um you know not comparing yourself to what this person or that person's doing you know because comparison's the thief of joy so they say and it really is and just like i appreciate where we're at as well and um yeah that's and being grateful grateful for what we've got yeah instead of wishing what we had got with you know what we have thinking about that yeah i love those lessons they're fantastic yeah yeah because it is isn't it we have enough all of us we're all special and unique in our own way and we've got to believe it and believe in ourselves. You know, we're all, you know, special in some way. You know, even though we might think, oh, we're quite ordinary, but there's always something. And yeah, so just kind of, yeah, embracing where we're at and, and who we are. <laughs> Absolutely. And finally, what advice would you give to someone who wants to live a healthier, happier, and more balanced lifestyle? Uh, well, I would say make time for yourself, even though, you know, often feels selfish. Um, so it's not, it's like self-care is like, you can't pour from an empty cup. And I've learned yeah. this through experience, you said, giving too much and, um, you know, like looking after everybody else before yourself. But it's like, you've got to look after yourself first. It's like being on a plane. They always tell you to put your oxygen yeah. mask on. But, you know, we it's you know especially women and all that we're looking after others um for before us and and sometimes well not just sometimes we've got to look after ourselves as well otherwise you know like you end up getting run down and yeah just overwhelmed with life and tired so so that's what my advice would be you know like just to take time out for yourself and your self-care and do the things you need to do you know to to stay happy and healthy absolutely <laughs> great advice i knew that i knew there would be great advice coming from the the skin witch uh and my uh, amazing massage therapist i'm so grateful that you joined us today and i'm so happy that you were open and honest about sharing your story because like i said before i'm sure that's going to help a lot of people be able to resonate with what you've been through and um, we're all on a journey we all have different experiences but we're all connected by this common bond of of getting through life and uh, thriving rather than surviving so yeah uh, you are a a perfect example of that you have literally survived and now you're thriving and and it's so wonderful to watch um I've watched your career progress and it's you've just blossomed and uh, yeah I highly recommend that everyone checks out uh, Sarah's amazing services and uh, yeah even if you have to get up at seven in the morning to do face yoga it's totally worth it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> morning i had about i think i had about six people wow. online some on facebook live and some on zoom so they turn up in the pajamas and everything. <laughs> yeah we have a good turnout um yeah there is usually someone i'm not usually on my own <laughs> even though it's a weird <laughs> but yeah m- monday there's a, they start and then they start trailing off by the week <laughs> i always have good intentions on a monday but yes, um, but there's always the replays. But it's really good to do it live because there's that connection, isn't yeah. it? It's all and yeah. yeah, it's not the same watching a video, but but yeah, it's still getting it done, isn't it? So, but when I was saying you can turn up live, you know, it's a different experience. But yeah, it's not for everyone getting up uh, and starting <laughs> that <in the> morning. <laughs> yeah, I do. Wow. I've just added recently. I said added some evening classes. You know, yeah. so people who can join in the evening well you know doing face massage and more relaxing slow pace ones and I would imagine that gets you ready for a good night's sleep as well doing it at that time yeah 
Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I've, um, that's proven to be quite popular as well. So I, I tend to try and fit them in on the days where I'm not doing in the morning, like yeah. on a Thursday and Sunday evening. So there's always something going on. <laughs> I don't really <laughs> think them up, but the routine every day. <laughs> Yeah, and you're so busy, and and, and I love watching you yeah. on social media as well. You give out lots of um, helpful tips and information to people, and you do demonstrations as well, which is is brilliant, so people can follow along. So, um, yeah, just I do try. Make sure you take that time for you, cause... though. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I am doing <laughs> good. <laughs> and after this podcast. I'm gonna um I'm gonna just go and lie under the LED till my next client comes because I've just heard something the other day and I'll really like it. Uh, I can't remember where I heard it, but it's this do something every day that makes you feel like you're on holiday. Oh, I, <laughs> I love thought, that. So that's my little bit of holiday today, going under that. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, isn't it? And it's that's just a... like because it doesn't have to be something fancy, but just simple things, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Like sitting out in your deck chair. In the sun. Yeah. And we've got beautiful weather. So, yeah, make yes, the most of it. Make the most of it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Enjoy your time <laughs> under the LED on your little mini holiday. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us yeah. today, Sarah. Oh, you've been a pleasure. Thanks, Joanne. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. I absolutely love chatting with Sarah for this episode. She is such an inspiration. She's literally turned her life around, started from scratch and embraced life, living each moment with passion and purpose. I hope you enjoyed listening and have been inspired too. Until next time, take care. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. I hope you found the discussion and the tips covered really helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this episode, please do leave a rating and a review and share it with your friends and family. Pop along to our website at thefullspectrumcenterlimited.com and join our self-care and wellness newsletter club. You'll receive our free 55-page printable self-care guide and workbook. Well, that's all for this episode, but I really look forward to seeing you next week. Take care and bye for now.